Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Winds Channel. I'm going to take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for the week of April 15th through the 21st. And we have one of the biggest, biggest transits of the year this week with Jupiter conjuncting Uranus. And both Mercury and Venus are going to conjunct one another and conjunct Chiron too. And another one or two things to talk about. Sun is going into Taurus this week and will square Pluto. So we're going to go through all that this week. Uh, and I just want to remind everyone first that the Astrological Winds channel is a free video blog that I do on YouTube every week. And if you are a, a YouTube, if you have a YouTube account, and you like what you see, please become a follower. And, you know, you'll get the notification every week when the blog comes on. I, the blog was a podcast long before it was a video um, podcast, just a regular podcast. And it is still available on just audio podcasts. Look it up on your favorite podcast, the Astro Astrological Winds channel. You should be able to find it. There's a bunch of them that take it, that do get it. You know, if you don't find it on one, look it up on another. And that, you know, frees you to check the blog out while you're doing other stuff. You know, usually it's just me talking to the camera. So you really don't need to necessarily see the video feed. Also, if you have Instagram, Astrological Winds Channel has an Instagram page. And I do post the link there every week. And sometimes extra comments and information can pop up on Instagram for only the Instagram people following. So check that out. Once again, Astrological Winds Channel, give Instagram, become a follower. And also do post a link on my private Facebook, which is Matthew with two T's, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. If you wanted to come up in your newsreel every week on Facebook, um, friend me and I'll get around to approving that. And and you can find it that way. And the best way to always find it is on my website. That is www.astrologicalwinds.com. No channel at the end of that. So it's just astrologicalwinds.com. I do embed all the blogs there. And you can go back and find, you know, ones from prior to this week, you know, this month, other ones there too. That also has my menu for all my professional services. I've been a professional astrologer for over 20 years and been giving readings that long, was trained professionally for seven years. And so the all the types of readings that I do, the other services that I offer for groups and individuals are all there on a menu and you can check that out. And that's the best way to support me when you need a reading or someone else you know does please you know get in touch with me can't help to open up some con hurt to open up some contact on that and um get that ball rolling and i will work with you as best i can with the, with budget or whatever it is um but yeah all the all the information you need is there and you know the other way i ask everyone to support this free blog is to pass the link on when you're done to someone else you know who might be interested in even if you've done that before you can think of someone else to pass it on to i'd really appreciate it if you'd like to give a currency donation no amount is too small then mo handle is matthew at you know the symbol at and then matthew hyphen in the middle lawton l-a-u-t-e-n capital l thank you um for anything that you do give and thanks for all the kind support thanks for following the blog i appreciate all that okay so last week was that eclipse and you know mercury retrograde has been going and i want to start off this week um right now today mercury retrograde makes its second hit it to Chiron, its second conjunction to Chiron. And I don't know about you guys, but like, you know, what I've been noticing and the people around me have been noticing about this Mercury retrograde in Aries is our undisciplined or impulsive or unthought out actions are what's messing us up. Um, just like anything that we thought like might be some loose end that, you know, that, you know, we weren't disciplined about following through with anything that we overlooked, anything that we we're impulsive about seems to be what's setting up the Mercury retrograde delays, the Mercury retrograde breakdowns, the Mercury retrograde communication issues, all that stuff that Mercury retrograde normally 
<laughs> excuse me, effects seems to be coming from our own actions, our own dis undisciplined, not thought out enough actions. And so it's interesting, you know, this is the second hit of Mercury conjunct Chiron. It's going to hit it a third time when it goes direct again. So what that means to me when Mercury goes retrograde and the aspects it makes in the in the week or 10 days coming up to the retrograde period then get a second hit while it's retrograde and a third exact hit when it goes direct again to me that energy of those aspects is imprinted into the whole mercury retrograde period so not only do you have that 20 21 day period or so where you have all that mercury retro that you normally expect from mercury retro but in this case, Chiron is also flavoring a lot of that energy. And, and to me, you know, you know, it's going, you're going to feel that also within that energy of Mercury retrograde, how Chiron is affecting this. And what I really think what it may be doing to us right now is it's giving us viewpoints from the outside that we haven't seen, you know, Mercury conjunct Chiron shows us new things. It can show us where we're hurting ourselves. It can show us how we're being impulsive or not thought out well enough, those kind of things and how we're kind of basically messing ourselves up. So in a certain way, you know, what, when we see that it can throw us off balance, you know, it can make us feel like, Oh, you know, this, and, and that can feed the Mercury retrograde stuff where we're not able to communicate as well. Our actions are awkward and off. Things aren't really working out well. But what we can do with the Mercury Chiron, with these new viewpoints that we have, with this new information that we're getting during this whole period on, on how, you know, we may be hurting ourselves is that we can use that then, that wisdom, that knowledge to initiate, especially in Aries, a new healing journey for ourselves, to take that information and to learn from it, to add it to our wisdom bank, so to speak, and then, you know, initiate a new healing journey instead. So I think that, you know, once again, talking about it a lot in the last year, talked about it a lot last week, you know, the North Node in Aries, Chiron in Aries, the New Moon, Eclipse, exactly conjunct Chiron, all in Aries, Mercury retrograde in Aries. It's all about having to be responsible for what we're doing ourselves, seeing how we are the ones who are responsible for our own actions. And therefore, we have to be the ones who are responsible for learning from that, getting the healing in, in from that, and moving forward in the dharmic direction that we're supposed to be going. Um, so very interesting. Now, that's really the only thing during the week. Most of the energy is, is backloaded towards next weekend. There's a bunch of stuff that goes on from Friday through Sunday. So like I said that Mercury conjunct Chiron, second hit, exact today, Monday, really spread out through the whole three or four week period of the mercury retro energy really feeling it strong and and so what happens on friday you remember venus went into aries right and that's where mercury retrograde is and going backwards and then venus is going forward so on friday they are going to conjunct one another going in opposite directions at least from our standpoint here on earth not really going in opposite directions up in the sky geodetically they it looks like they are and as i said you know venus is weak in aries it's not once again the same thing kind of like with mercury in aries is like being a little too impulsive with our decision making you know and that may come over into relationships when it's with aries kind of just being a little bit too pushy forward all that so it's not a sign that venus is really comfortable in is what i'm reminding you guys of and so we have 
you know, Venus moving forward, Mercury going back, and boom, they crash basically into each other on Friday. And, you know, usually Mercury-Venus conjunctions, you know, have a few effects, and, you know, they're, they're pretty positive effects for the most part. Um, the first one is it really is a you know, it blends the intellect and the emotions together. So we can be very articulate, very eloquent with our words in expressing the way we feel. But it still is interesting, though, because there is a little bit of detachment from that. And that's what actually gives us enough objectivity, even about our own emotional content, to be able to express it in a rational enough way that other people get the message and it doesn't, you know, get too dramatic and off track. So it's actually a really good balance, is my point, between the intellect and emotions. And it's very good. Very, very good for discussions, conversations, being open and, and allowing the emotions to come in, but not carry us away. Allowing the emotions to color the picture, but not take us way off the track or down a hole or into a dramatic spin. So this is a really excellent aspect, you know, to tell people how you really feel about them and your relationship and, you know, um, especially your loved ones, your friends, people you're close to, you know, to just get, let them know how you're really feeling about them and the relationship that you have with them, because there's a good degree of objectivity and yet we're really honest and open about our emotions. Now, that can be one of the problems with this one too, because we are in the double Aries thing. Both are in Aries. The danger of that, I think, would be that we're too subjective about the way we're seeing those relationships. And therefore it comes out in our communication and the other person, the receiver is like, whoa, that's not the way I see it. Now, they may not even see, say that to you. You know, it's possible they're just going to take it in and be like, oh, there's a, you know, there's a new viewpoint. But I think that's where there's a danger here because of Aries being weak for Venus and Mercury being retrograde in Aries. We can get too subjective and wrapped up in thinking that that's or assuming that that's the way other people are feeling too and then just and then kind of maybe i don't want to say shock other people but get them to kind of like ooh, mercury retrograde shut down be quiet let me take this in this way the way this person's feeling so that can be one now the other one of the other great things about mercury with venus is mercury is once again our words our communication and Venus is also our creativity. So this is an excellent time for creative use of words, language, you know, any kind of um, writing or speaking or poetry or reading, all that kind of stuff, creative energy, artistic energy surrounding words, lyrics, all kinds of, you know, imaginatory stories, storytelling, things like that. Now, what's interesting is, once again, it's retrograde, you know, so we may not be ready to completely bring that out to the world. Or then again, with Aries, we may, and, and we may do it a little too quickly or impulsively and not have it all together. But this is a time where we can really generate that inside ourselves, really work on what we do want to bring out to the world once the Mercury retrograde period is over. Now, the other thing that's really interesting about Mercury and Venus when they get together like this is the ability to see the patterns behind things, to get, um, to, to, to see things on a deeper level where you can't really be fooled and you can see how different parts are playing in any situation, relationships or whatever it may be, even just in situations and experiences going on, just seeing how different cycles come together and feed things. And we may get this on a very deep level with the Mercury retrograde. We may really 
get a new way of seeing it on a much deeper level than we've seen it before. Now, the second thing going on on on, Saturday, on Friday also is the sun is changing signs, going from Aries into Taurus. So we're going to start heading towards the Taurus energy, which is the middle of the spring in the northern hemisphere and the middle of the fall in the southern hemisphere. So it starts to bring stability here. Taurus is an earth sign. It's a fixed earth sign so it it brings stability it brings life back and feeling like you know there's this stable ground and it gets us very interested in the practical side of life our actions are driven by getting results in the real world we're into collecting our things our assets our property our money and we're also into very much into Um, sharing and protecting them with our loved ones, the people we are, you know, we're really attached to, we really want to take care of when the sun is in Taurus. We want to make sure that they're getting all the things that they need. So the thing about the sun in Taurus is it is driven by getting a lot of satisfaction through materials and therefore you know, the more strong emotional content stuff, stuff that's dramatic or stuff that's problematic can have a tendency to be pushed aside during the Taurus energy because it can, you know, mess with, you know, the practical world. And and we can get very much in a fixed traditional state of mind too with Taurus energy and not allow a lot of change or new things come in kind of almost feel like that's a threat actually if anything but we have a very step-by-step grounded process and we're very in touch with the cycles of the earth in particular and being able to work with them but it, it really comes from a traditional standpoint doesn't really like to bring in a lot of change may actually feel threatened by change and that's what actually can get it feeling angry it's slow to anger when we're in Taurus but when it does get angry it can it can be very very strong anger that can come out but yeah this is a time where we really want to stabilize we really want to see the results of our actions we want to see our assets and our objects and our money and our finances in a stable pattern and we will work towards doing making sure that that's happening mainly with time-tested true methods that we know have worked before now the biggest event of the week the biggest event of the month and one of the two biggest events of the year besides pluto going into aquarius is jupiter conjunct uranus and Jupiter conjuncts Uranus, I think it's about every 14 or 15 years. The last time it happened was in 2010, and it was in Aries, <laughs> of course, back then. This year, this year, it's in Taurus, and the last time it was in Taurus was all the way back in 1941. So Jupiter and Uranus have something very much in common. And that is the word freedom, that both of them are energies that really represent freedom and the desire to expand and grow through freedom and to make that expansion and growth very wide, very far reaching into the future, very um, knowledgeable, bringing wisdom through intuition and higher knowledge. but. What it really wants more than anything is the freedom to be who we really are and express who we really are. So what's interesting on an individual level, when Jupiter conjuncts Uranus, many times it will bring a sudden change into our life. And that sudden change ultimately frees us from some of our responsibilities or duties that we had in the real world prior to that. Now, this can shake, you know, it can be shaking, especially in Taurus. You know, it can really shake us up that, you know, there's suddenly, you know, having less responsibility or duty for some quick change that came in. But 
what the payoff is, is actually is giving what these two planets want. And that is more freedom and independence. That is more of the ability to move towards who you really are and and towards your ideals. And 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 so it brings it can be bring some very quick transformation, is my point on an individual level and and free us from a lot of the things that have held us in a certain place and depending on how you look at change is how you'll react to that you know you could see that as a threat especially in Taurus but it's also something that can bring freedom and growth and bring you to a place where you can really honor who you really are. And so what does that do? It brings up new possibilities. It can get us very excited, bring in new ideas, new knowledge of where can I take this? This can take me in a very far place. It can propel me into a new place in the future. So this is very exciting on that level. You know, it's going to bring, you know, changes that stoke us get us excited get us stimulated you know and and strip away some of the older needs that we have and let and allow new things to come in to replace them so you know interestingly enough you know just think you know on a social level these two planets when they get together many times represent some kind of social movement. Now think about the last time they were together. It was 2010, I said, right? Jupiter <clears throat> conjuncted Uranus in Aries. And <clears throat> what was going on back in 2010? Two big, big social movements were starting to form and gather a lot of strength. There was the Tea Party on one side, and there was Occupy on the other side, you know, and both of them in Aries, very driven to initiate, take action. And once again, a lot of that, because of Aries impulsiveness, created a lot of wild, crazy energy for literally ever since then, right? Really ever since that last conjunction, the last 14 or 15 years has been so much about a divisiveness between two big social movements in the U.S. Now, the one prior to that, thing being the first, I mean, the one, the last time that it was in Taurus was in 1941, and right when the U.S. was pulled into World War II, right? And what's interesting about that one is in Taurus, more traditional, more disciplinary, more strong-willed and stubborn, and what was the social movements going on then? It was having to fight these extreme right-wing fascist um, countries, Japan, Italy, and Germany at the time, and these massive social movements that had rallied behind their leaders and the rest of the world, you know, having to be that Jupiter Uranus of like, you no, know, you know, we think, you know, freedom and is more important, you know, so... You know, so is that, you know, going to be the imprint we're working on right now? Because you can really see the world is very divided again between that right and left. And yet, you know, the people, you know, in power seem to have that more controlling Taurus traditional energy and that they're not willing to give up and being very stubborn about it. And yet there's these massive movements, social movements surrounding both you know, sides of the political spectrum and pushing for more change, more freedom, more independence. So this is going to be a very interesting year. You know, what what gets spurred this year and born this year out of this energy is going to probably affect the next 14 or 15 years until these two conjunct one another again. And what's extra interesting on this weekend is Mars is sextiling both of them exactly. So going back to an individual, this really wants us to be motivated to push forward on what we want to do, what the changes we want to make. It gives a lot of energy, high, high energy, to, and it can move a lot 
of energy at one time or in a very short amount of time. So it can be very productive, but it, it's, it's this very confident energy and it will take risks. It will take gambles. And most of the time, those gambles will succeed and pay off under this energy. It has the ability to adapt very quickly to changing the situations and those kind of things. So like, once again, I think that Mars is actually going to possibly help break up some of the tourist stubbornness in this energy and give us the motivation and the opportunities to want to change circumstances that are around us and to, you know, find new alternative ways of dealing with things, find ways that we have more freedom to be who we really are and, you know, push what we really want to do for ourselves first and then bringing that into society too so there can be a lot of things that change rapidly but it gives us the ability to adjust to that to like hit the ground running to you know to fly forward with this energy so the last couple things i want to mention getting close to a half hour here um sunday there's two more aspects venus now remember also in aries is now going to conjunct um chiron also so it's moving forward. It finally catches up with Chiron. And this can be really a real sweet aspect. You know, we can, this has us searching for the truth, for healing through our relationships. And we can reflect that back and forth to one another very well. This is a time when we can be very supportive to one another emotionally and help each other out with the pain and wounding we have, and we can learn a lot from one another, and that can be very helpful too. So this is a very, very, very sweet energy. And it also, you know, gives us the ability to beautify areas, you know, to see how we can make a healing environment too, how something can, you know, be more aesthetically pleasing even can make for a more healing environment. So it can really connect us with these beautiful spaces, people that help us and vice versa us helping them. Now, there's one other aspect, however, going on on Sunday that's very different from that. And that, that is the sun, remember going just into Taurus, is going to square Pluto, which is right at the beginning of Aquarius. And this is, this is about power struggles, really. Um, this is where we can find ourselves under um, the control or authority of someone who has more power than us, who has more strength than us, who has more influence than us, is our superior in authority. And they can really, you know, push us around and coerce us because of the position they're in. And that can get us very angry with them and it can dissolve into a very power struggle type of situation but a lot of what this is about too is life just testing us testing us to see if we've learned what is holding us back and can we are we able to let go of old ways of doing things old patterns of behavior old reactions to even the way people are power struggling or power tripping us is there another way we can deal with this this is about purging things out of us that are no longer working, make reformations to things that are breaking down, both situationally or mechanically or physically or whatever level it may be. It's seeing that those things are breaking down. So we need to make some changes. We need to make some repairs or reforms, or we need to just get rid of the stuff, get it, clear the space out. When we clear the space out, it allows the energy of transformation to come in. But life really tests us with the sun square Pluto and many times through superiors and others or the life circumstances that were going on around us to show us that our old ways are what need to be cleared in order to bring transformation in. And once we do that, we can really propel ourselves forward in, and get very much, you know, into a place where we can allow change to come in that will
will completely transform the way we do things. So a lot of stuff going on this week, you guys, and I could probably spend another half hour really on the things I was just talking about, but um, we're still really under the effect of the eclipse, the Mercury retrograde, the Aries energy, but this Jupiter Uranus conjunction, you can see it playing out on the world stages already, you know, the social movements on both sides, and that's going to be brought down to an individual level. The changes we're all going through right now are trying to free us to go to another place, trying to break us away and show us how we're stuck and how many times we are the own author of the way that we're stuck. So there's a lot for us to learn this week about those things that, you know, and, and, and then trying to see what it will, that will spur us on to find the freedom to be who we really are and, you know, and spark our lives up, stimulate our lives break it free from the things that are slowing it down. And next week we're going to get uh, Mercury is going to go direct next week. So we'll be finally moving forward again. We'll be in shadow for a week or two still. Um, and then also next week, we're going to get our full moon. It's going to be in Scorpio. I think it's about five degrees of Scorpio. And that means it's going to be in a T square with Pluto. So it's probably going to be a pretty intense one again. It'll probably be like a lot of like the stuff that happened from the new moon and eclipse and how we are going to have to deal with those things. So look forward to that next week. So this is Matt Lawton, the Astrological Winds channel. Please pass the link on. This is a free service. Please pass it on now for me. I really appreciate when you do that. If you need a reading, please check my website out www.astrologicalwinds.com. All the information is there. The contact is there. Open up a conversation with me. Can't hurt. And I've been doing them for many years. If you have a group looking for events, same thing. All that's there. Remember, the um, website also has all the blogs embedded in it. it. Takes you right over here to YouTube. If you do have a YouTube account, please become a follower. Remember, it's available on podcast too. There's an Instagram page for Astrological Winds Channel too. I really appreciate all you guys. Know that you know the world's going through a lot with this eclipse and Mercury retro, and you know a lot of changes going on. And this Jupiter Uranus promises stimulation and more freedom and more ability to be who we are as we after we go through all these changes. But we have to have that right attitude of allowing that new stuff to come in letting go of some of the old stuff. All right. I'll see you all next week for that Mercury Direct and that full moon in Scorpio.